but you kind of work your way into it. As you move along, you become more adept at what, at what you're doing. Well, it just works. <laughs> I mean, I can't teach it to anybody. Everybody would have to just kind of do it. <laughs> um, where did you get the idea to... I got mad. <laughs> I mean, sometimes you have to get mad. You know, we were one of the first Italian grocery stores in Los Angeles. We go back to 1897. We've been at this location since 1955, and I was there the day we opened. And um, what had happened was that the big chain stores bought the distribution channels for the little stores and closed them down. So the little stores couldn't compete anymore. Up until that time, um, the little stores were the cap on the big store pricing. As soon as they got rid of the little stores, they can charge anything they wanted. And they have, by the way. Mm -hmm. Anything. Yeah. So we were sitting around and we were in the process of going broke. And I thought about it and I'm going, well, I like sodas. We've already been through it with the micro brews, but you have to be 21 to buy it. But if you're, as long as you have the money and you're old enough, you can buy a soda. You don't have to worry about being 21. So. I was thinking about this, and at about that time, the Pepsi Cola salesman walked in. He says, I'm going to give you the best buy you're ever going to get on a pallet of Pepsi Cola cans. I'm only going to charge you $5.59 a case. And I looked at him and I said, well, tell me, how much profit am I going to make on that 100-case pallet since I'm going to get the best buy that I'm ever going to get? And he says, oh, you'll make about $30. And I looked at him and I said, well, thank you, but no thank you. I'm going to send my customers down to Ralph's, down the street. They're going to buy them for $2.99 uh, uh, Let's see, where is it? $1.99 a 12-pack. This is 11 years ago. $1.99 a 12-pack. And he says, well, you can't do that. Pepsi Cola is a demand item. Your customers are going to demand that you carry Pepsi Cola. I said, my customers are going to be happy I was honest with them and told them they can buy them cheaper than I can buy them. Why do they want to buy them from me? Well, he just kind of turned around and stormed out. And the next day, he was back with his regional manager and his area manager. And they looked around. And they never said a word. They just looked around and walked out and didn't see anybody. So for two weeks, I was really, really mad. I was really grumpy. Oh, nobody could talk to me. And then after about two weeks, the light bulb went on. And the light bulb was, you know, you own your shelf space. Pepsi Cola doesn't own it. You can do anything you want to do. And you should be happy that you can do anything you want to do. So I went out and found 25 little brands of soda and put them on the shelf and people would come in and look and say, well, what are you doing with all that, that old stuff that doesn't move anymore? It doesn't sell anymore. Mm -hmm. And where are you getting them? Oh, no, anyway, all those kind of questions. And I just, after that, I just didn't say anything. And then when I got to 250, it's where you're finding them. Mm -hmm. So right now we have about 500 different sodas. We have 500 different kinds of beers. And what you find out is, that we're offering variety, we're offering the freedom of choice, we're offering everything that the chain stores don't do. I mean, I, it really bothers me that, that one of the major retailers in the food industry comes along and says, oh, we pre-select the best, so our customers don't have to choose. Wait a minute, wait a minute. We're not all dropped in a mold and we're not all stamped out and pressed out. Everybody has a different idea of what the best is. And so, we offer choices, like, we have probably 50 root beers, we have 40 cream sodas, we have, uh, we have five or six or eight or ten different colas. Did you know that colas came in flavors? Most people don't. It's either a Coke or a Pepsi. But there's much more to life than Coke and Pepsi, believe me. And the only reason why that's all the choices we have is because they buy the shelf space at the supermarket and they load the price up on the little guy, so the little guy winds up supporting the chain stores. And they give them the money and we pay for them. Well, I'm not doing that. You know, I just refuse to do that. I don't, we don't do any business with Coke or Pepsi. <laughs> All so, of our business is done with independent bottlers. Is there, um, given that you have so many, uh, so much variety, is do you find that one brand or one particular soda dominates no, the sale? No, it doesn't. That's the biggest mm -hmm. fallacy in the world. They may sell for a while, but everybody will sell something different. Mm -hmm. Because, for example, I, we do some, some, we do some wholesaling, mm -hmm. and what we found out is that one restaurant, one block away from the other one, and we're servicing both of them, but they both sell different things. One can't sell what the other one sells, and the other one can't sell what they sell. So it just kind of works out. But you know, we have interesting things. We have a cucumber soda. You know, we have a mint soda. 
We have a dandelion and burdock soda. We have a coffee soda made from coffee, not made from a flavoring. And that company goes back to 1895 in Brooklyn. Same family. I mean, they're incredible. And we have a lot of little bottlers like that throughout the country that we do business with. And, and it's just good. It's good for little business. It's good for little business to do business with other little business and not do business with, the, with, the, with corporate America. Corporate America wants to control everything. So. How do you feel about um, recently the LA uh, County Council wanted to put a tax on soft drinks? Well, that's silly. That's silly. That's absolutely the most silliest thing I've ever heard. You know, I, a Coca-Cola guy came in here, the Western Regional Manager, and he, we were talking about it. And I said, you know, you guys are setting yourself up for a lawsuit. He says, well, what do you mean? I said, well, we live in a society where we take care of our brothers. You know, I'm responsible for you, and you're responsible for the person over there. Well, I'm sorry, I don't believe in that. I mean, everybody makes their own decisions. And I pointed to the McDonald's across the street, and I said, look at that. A single serve, 96-ounce Coke. You know what? You're better off giving them a 12-ounce cup and letting them refill it, because then it becomes their choice, not yours, and you eliminate the lawsuit. And he just looked at me. He had the strangest look on his face when I said that, because their job is to sell more Coca-Cola. But that's not smart. I'm sorry, it's not smart. I mean, and the tax, that's, that's making somebody else responsible for you. Look, if you want to buy a Coke and you want to go back and get 20 refills, that's your choice. Somebody, don't, don't give up your rights to somebody else or to some legislative body to come out and, and make decisions for you. That's wrong. It's absolutely wrong. You know, you make the choice. And if you want to talk yeah. about that, we can go yeah. into it in depth. And um, also, just especially like around the holidays, do you think that um, you offer kind of like a novelty? Is that well, not so much a novelty, of, yeah. but we offer choices. You know, we we're on the internet. We've been on the internet for ten yeah. years, mm -hmm. and it was really interesting. I didn't want to go on the internet, and I told my daughter, and I said, Noel. Mm -hmm. If it's going to take all the fun out of it if we go on the internet. She says, what do you mean? I said, the shipping's too expensive. The shipping is more than the product. It's, it doesn't make any sense. And she says, well, Dad, do you want to tell people how to spend their money? And I just walked away from her. Well, lo and behold, about five minutes later, we get a call from somebody in Tennessee that wanted to buy some sodas. And I told him we weren't on the internet, and he wanted great bet. And we weren't on the internet, and... and Okay, so we're not on the internet, and I'm sorry, and he just, he was on there, and I said, well, we can't ship to you, we're not on the internet. And he just hesitated for a moment, and then he said, you know what, I was planning uh, a road trip this summer out to the Grand Canyon, I think I'll swing by. And my daughter heard me, and she says, now, Dad, now do you want to tell people how to spend their money? I said, nope, I'm not interested in it, but you take care of it. And that's what's happened. Oh, wow. So she takes care of the internet. And um, how much business or like how busy is the online kind the of online side of things? The online can be busy. I mean, what oh. it does is the internet is the best thing for little businesses. It's actually given exposure to a lot of little businesses that can't get on to, to they can't afford to advertise. I mean, you know, you get Coke and Pepsi with their billboards and and we're the choice of a new generation mm -hmm. and all those catchy slogans. Well, they can't do it. They're busy making product. So every time I get up and I mention something. And I say, okay, for example, well, here's a mint julep. Have you ever had a mint soda? If you like mint, you're going to love it. If you don't like it, you're going to think it tastes like mouthwash. But it's wonderful. I like mint. I mean, I just really like mint. Maybe you want to try a, a ginger beer. Do you like spicy? Oh, my goodness. This isn't the one. But this is the brand, and there's one. It's marked Hot, Hot, Hot. It's on the back side. And they're actually made with ginger root oil. They're not made with an extract or a flavor. That's really important. It's important for the people to know that there's not all artificial flavors. There are people out there still doing things the way they used to be done, with real flavors, natural flavors. And, t and today, most of the, the, the big corporate, they're using artificial flavors. And it tastes artificial. And they're using corn syrup because the American, the American taxpayer is supporting Archer Daniel Midland, ConAgra, and, and, and Cargill. Now, do we really need to support them? No, I don't think so. All of that legislation was passed during the, uh, during the time, that, uh, the Dust Bowl, and that was to support farmers and get some farmers back. Now we're supporting the corn lobby. Mm -hmm. I, we don't need it. Get yeah. rid of it. Let's, yeah. let's, the cane sugar 
crop worldwide is twice as large as corn and wheat put together. Why are we subsidizing corn? No sense. Mm -hmm. 